Hello, hi, I'm Patricia, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about doubt. It is very common to have doubts on the journey. Let's just jump right in, because I have a few bullet points on the board, and Twin Flame Landy, it's time to go to school. Here we go. When I talk about doubt, the very first thing I want to tell you is it is kind of going around the internet that doubt is common on the journey. I want to clarify something. It's not just that doubts are common on the journey. Doubt is a natural part of you. It doesn't mean doubting yourself. It could mean doubting things, doubting circumstances, doubting the outcome, and especially doubting maybe a person that you might think is supposed to love you and they just are not giving any signs of it. But let's talk about it as a part of you and a part of your like central nervous system. It's a part of your chakra system. It's also a part of shared connections with each other. So if it's not the person, you know, it's going to be one way. If it is your person, you're going to share the good stuff. So the first thing is doubt. It is a part of your natural warning system. Now, for years, I had a spirit guide who would constantly say to me, be aware. She didn't mean mindfulness. She didn't mean go into a meditation. What was meant and implied by that was you know, pay attention, pay attention to the real signals, pay attention to your warning system, pay attention to your own damn common sense. And yet many times that's tough because you can feel very muddled up. You can feel overwhelmed. You could be going through a situation or purging or have something along the lines of like a situation where you feel like that energies are pushing, pulling, you know, there is a push-pull of energies. Now, in some ways, that's like taking people and shaking them and saying, what the heck, or shaking things out of them. In another way, you may feel like this is creating tensions in your body, and those tensions then confuse you. And again, it's there are things that are just going to boil down to your body, your light body, your brand new twin flame body that's trying to emerge and discard a lot of the old things, old situation, old people, places, things. Many people override their own warning systems. Now, I use an example sometimes of abused animals. Okay, if you've ever seen an animal that's been picked up, taken to a shelter, they've been abused or neglected or starved or not touched or trapped somehow, what happens with them? The very first thing is they're in safety. They're in safety and, you know, things about their body need to come back to normal. They need basic stuff. They may need nutrition. They might need health care, medical care. Okay, it's, it's the same with humans and a lot of times humans go along the same way, never realizing that in their families, they're in a state of hypervigilance and their cortisol levels are through the roof. And they need that to calm down and come into balance. Now, your brand new twin flame body wants to naturally balance that for you on your behalf where it's not even a thought. But the thoughts come and with thoughts come doubts. How would I do this? What am I going to do? You simply work with my modality, which is specifically for the twin flame body. But many people override their own warnings. When does this happen? I've known many people, especially females, as children, there was some kind of, uh, you know, creep in their midst. It might be uncle so-and-so, or it might be a family friend, or it might be a teacher or somebody. And that's just wrong. However, it has happened to millions of people. How do we then reverse the ill effects when, you know, let's say it's a relative or a family member and... The family is literally saying, go give them a hug or greet them, smile at them. Don't run away. That's rude. Okay. And those of us who usually it is females, we chide ourselves and we say, oh my goodness, I was being rude. Or what kind of person am I? I was being rude. I should override my own natural inclinations to avoid trouble, to avoid any of the creepiness, whatever 
you know, extreme it is, or even if it's mild and people are rationalizing it and just saying, oh, that's how it is. I have literally told people or had people tell me that they have thought that's how it is for everyone. It's not, and it's not normal. And yet it leaves people with severe doubts about their own self-worth, their own self-esteem, their own capabilities, who they are, their self-identity, you know, are they a victim? You're not a victim. Your soul does not want you to be a victim. Your soul wants you out of those situations. I'm here to help you remove and unplug and cut it and discard completely, transmute it forever and integrate the brand new template or blueprint of your twin flame body that doesn't want to hold any of those things. What if you have doubts? You need to pause. Even if your pause is for three days, even if your pause is for a week, even if your pause is for a month, if you don't feel okay to render a decision, don't do it. Okay. Don't get pushed. Okay. Don't get steamrolled. Don't get, you know, if you're having doubts, can you trust yourself? Now, I will tell you this. When you work with your twin flame body and you work on the integration, other information comes and surrounds that. You don't need to pull cards and see what cards are surrounding, you know, like a tower card. If you get a tower card, that's pretty much like all the foundations are crumbling and you're going to rebuild anyway. So, you know, when it comes to things like that, how do you take charge of your own life? It is with guidance from your own higher self because that higher self is you and it's you and it's you up here and it's you down here and it's you, 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 you. It's always you. So pausing means exactly that. Pause, breathe, do something else, work with your twin flame body because answers can come through you, your senses, your emotions, those feel good things that make you feel good when you've made a, the right decision. Don't be hasty. This is not energy to be hasty. If you're doubting, let's take a relationship. You're doubting that maybe is it your spouse. Are they the one? Or are they not the one? Just pause with it. Don't make any decisions and focus on you. In other words, those decisions should not be hasty where you run and go get a divorce right away. It may not be the time for it. Or it may be the time for it. But if it is the time for it, we can work with you so that you properly exit with a plan. Okay? You didn't remember that you came here with a plan. Did you plan for things to break? Do you plan for your car to break down? Do you plan for floods? Do you plan? To an extent, we do plan. But in many ways, there are a lot of people who didn't plan to be on the twin flame journey. And that's sort of a paradox because... It's so dense here. You can't remember what was I supposed to do? Who is it supposed to be? How are we doing this? What are, you know, what are, are my gifts and skills? It is a gradual unfolding, like peeling the petals of a flower so that you blossom because it's for you. It is for your benefit, your mental health, your well-being. And doubt is not a mental health affliction. But people who have mental health issues sometimes have perception issues or especially if people have addictions, they have a lot of perception issues. Frankly, their perception is skewed. Even if they're doing uh, ritual drugs like Cambo, Ayahuasca, you know, people think this helps them. It's just tripping them out on their limbic system, which is memories. They're not really going anywhere with it and it degrades and it damages the neural system and the perceptions. Do they doubt or do they really know what's going on? It happens with a lot of people. It is not a spiritual solution. The twin flame body, which infuses you with love, is really what you're here for because it doesn't want to carry all that stuff. Now, what else about doubts? Red flags, okay? Where do the red flags come? A lot of times they can come in your dreams. They can come in flashes. I'll give you some examples. People have had flashes of like something layered over someone. Um, it doesn't mean everyone is like creepy, but you might have a flash of like, wait a minute, this is something that happened in the past or 
I'm suddenly in this deja vu situation and something's repeating, but now I'm catching on. How do you break that? How do you use that positively for your own benefit, for a healthy outcome, for shifting it? I help you with those things. I have also had people who've been convinced hands down that someone is their twin flame only to dream that that person murdered them. And they, it was vividly real because they were reimmersed in that situation to really show them who this person is. Now, if there are other factors surrounding the meeting of a person, if they've abandoned you, if they never contact you again, please take heed because you may doubt and you might say, what the hell was that? That was like a drive-by shooting. They got with me and then they left me and like I'm laying here on the ground and bleeding out. No, you're not. Time to pick yourself up and get with the program. You do that by focusing on the body, really. When you focus on you and you focus on the integration, that is that does sift and sort because that new part of you is intended to be so new that it doesn't carry all that past stuff with it. You can gladly say goodbye to old situations, to being ghosted. And you may doubt yourself too if you've been ghosted. You might say, did I deserve this? I'm such a nice person. You could go through your little checklist. I'm well-rounded. I cook. I speak languages. I'm well-traveled. I'm a nice person. I volunteer. Nobody cares because if someone ghosts you, you're the only person who should care. That person is not only doing you a favor, they, are, they have a sole agreement to remove themselves from your life and stop getting in your way. That's really what's happening. So stop getting in your own way and let doubt tell you what it needs to tell you. The next thing is not just red flags, but body reactions, body reactions. This is sometimes a part of your fight or flight system. Hands down, you will find that there are sometimes reactions or non-reactions because your fight or flight system is so numbed out you don't even know what to do. And that leads to mental doubts also. What should I do? How should I do it? Should I say no? But those deep feelings, because we are deep, they will well up from somewhere. They will well up from inside you. Why? Because, guess what? You live inside each other, okay? The part of your other half that's in you, that's touching your heart, that needs to expand is giving you all these like little warning bells. Your alarm system is going off. So that part of you is also a part of your immune system. Why do I say that? Guess what about your immune system? It's not just doubt or mental doubt or mental confusion and overwhelm and feeling scattered. It leads to ADHD situations. It leads to OCD situations. And another thing, people make us sick. <laughs> they make us sick with their toxic stuff. How much is your immune system supposed to take? So, I mean, it's not just viruses or catching a sniffle. People's toxic stuff leads to things like congestive heart failure unrequited love. That's really a root cause of congestive heart failure. Lymph system issues. You ever have swelling in your limbs? You, your emotions are not moving. You're not functioning properly. Your immune system needs all that emotional waste out of your body. So this is important for your immune system. The other thing I'm going to leave you with in terms of doubt is Use the sense that God gave a goose. This is a saying we've had in my family. I've heard a lot of people say it. It probably has European origins, but there's an animalistic mammal part of us that is very, let's say, primeval, primal. That part of us has a survival mechanism. We're wired to survive. We're also, you know, higher consciousness beings. So, we have this thing of like, well, I can get out of here. Like, well, then how are you going to get yourself out? You start with common sense. 
and you use the sense that God even gives the animals because you have that sense, stop overriding it. Stop overriding your own sense and sensibilities. So if you have doubts and I can help you on your journey, we do coaching, we do one-on-one -on -one energetic sessions to help you heal. Some of these things are so deep, you may need a psyche, subtle body session. And try my new book. The link is below. The book has exercises in it and really good common sense, practical actions you can take that are easy to do. And my book carries the energies. And I am a Blu-ray, so I'm a prototyper. And I make this easy for people. If you need help, try the book. It's a really great way to start. Join my webinar. You could join my webinar. That's coming up. Energies are going to push. So thank you. Have a great day and see you soon. Bye.